If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like this video. Let's check this out together. Kamala Harris did not lose this election because she's a woman. She lost this election because there were American families sitting there telling her how they couldn't afford to put food in their fridge. And her solution was to bring out Meg Thee Stallion to twerk on stage alongside just about every single one of Pete Diddy's friends to endorse her. She lost this election because there were Americans who lost everything in an absolutely horrific hurricane. And she sat there telling them that $750 should be enough for them if they even qualify while simultaneously funding illegal staying in five-star hotels in New York City, receiving three meals a day provided to them by taxpayer dollars. She lost this election because she sat there talking about how anti-racism she was while simultaneously blaming straight white men for just about every single problem this country has. Isn't it funny that if you demonize a group of people long enough for merely existing, they might not want to vote for you? American politics has changed forever. You will no longer be able to sit there and bully Americans into voting for you. It won't work. Unfortunately, our politicians on both sides seem to forget that they are actually public servants. They answer to the public, not the other way around, and they need to get behind that, they need to understand that, and they need to change and reform their policies to fit what the public is saying, or they will get left in the dust, as Kamala learned the hard way. Yeah. TikTok is blowing up with videos of liberal women shaving their heads and pledging celibacy as a way to protest Donald Trump's election win. Honestly, the reactions are wild. It's like these emotional breakdowns should be studied or something. There's one viral clip in particular that stands out. And it even connects with a recent video from Maxine Waters. Uh, what is the lesson that your party should have learned? Well, uh, the Democratic Party worked very hard. And uh, they raised, you know, substantial sum of money. We had great candidates. And so uh, Trump had a following, uh, basically, generally led by whites. White males voted uh, in big numbers. He had a few uh, from uh, the other... Uh, race groups uh, that joined in, like the Latinos at 45 percent, and black men at about the same rate uh, that they did uh, when they voted for him before, at about 20 percent. That combination won. And so it is not that Democrats did not work hard, did not do a great job. Uh, we had an unusual situation where we had a black woman, uh, which this country has never seen before. A combination of all of those things led to his win. Mm. Uh, I will not push back on the idea that race and sex matter in America and politics. I think they do. Uh, I don't know that it was the controlling variable, and you don't suggest otherwise. To me, it seemed to be that the Democrats thought Trump stinks is enough. And Senator Bernie Sanders said something that reminded me of you, which is why I wanted you on the show tonight, Maxine, which is Democratic Party used to be, we are all about doing for working people. That's what we do. That's what Mario Cuomo's party, that's what Maxine Waters' party was. You are now seen as not that, even by Bernie Sanders. In that clip, Chris Cuomo directly asked Maxine Waters what lesson the Democratic Party should learn after the American people gave a clear no to the left-leaning agenda and elected a fully conservative government. Listen closely to her response. It's an answer that Cuomo quickly shuts down. If you're enjoying this type of video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.